So since we're on the topic of transformation and innovation, I thought I'd share with you a bit of a story. This is me, this is my previous life. I'm a sustainability advisor, but I actually started my career as a geologist. And I spent a lot of time working in Nunavut, which is Canada's newest territory, um, well above the tree line uh, in this remote camp that you see here. It was on a lake, it was fly in, fly out. I worked with about maybe 40 people. And I was part of a team of geologists that was hired to log a lot of drill core. And I mean like tens of thousands of meters of that stuff in the top right. And you basically have to have a very good sense of humor or be completely insane to do this type of work. <laughs> Uh, I'll let you decide what category I fall into, but uh, this job was an incredibly transformational moment and experience for me. So if you can see in the center of this picture, there's sort of like a yellow little house and it has a green roof. That's where I spent most of my time in the core shack. And one day I was taking a break, having a cup of tea, you know, listening to little Justin Timberlake, chilling out. And there was no generator on. It was this beautiful, quiet moment. Uh, if any of you spent time around generators, you know about the white noise. So I was having a cup of tea, taking a break, and I looked down at my cup of tea, and I looked up, and this is what I saw. So it's fall, it's just gorgeous. All the colors are vibrant and yellows and reds, and this picture really does not do it any justice. And this caribou kind of wandered out of the middle of nowhere. Like he literally, I looked down, he wasn't there, and I looked up and he was there. So this is maybe about 200 meters away from me, and I remember thinking, wow, this guy is so not afraid of me. And I just stood there, and we kind of had this moment, and I looked at him, and he looked at me, and it was a special moment for me, probably not so great for him, but... <laughs> and in that moment, I realized exactly where that caribou was standing was where the beginning of that open pit mine was gonna be. And this is what I call my caribou aha moment. I realized, I don't really want to do this job anymore. So I transitioned out of geology and went back to school. I did my master's degree in strategic leadership towards sustainability in a beautiful city in Karls, called Karlskrona in the southern part of Sweden. While I was there, I had this great friend named Neil, and I had a conversation with him. And he said to me, in 50 years' time, when my grandkids asked me why I continued to take a crap in seven liters of water and flush it down the toilet, I'm actually really not going to have any easy answers for them, and that deeply, <laughs> deeply troubles me. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, you know, that's a pretty bad idea. And I think it's a great example of the bad ideas that exist today that we know that if we don't do something about them, they're going to turn into something that I call a bad idea hangover. So I thought I'd take a moment to look back on some memorable bad ideas from the last 40 to 50 years. So the first one is the love quiz for married folks only, where she is contemplating why her husband decides not to spend time with her at home, and you can see him leaving. And perhaps it's because she has poor feminine hygiene and she has bad odors, and maybe she should use Lysol to fix that. The second bad idea is eat, 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 and always stay thin. Banish fat, be gone, the enemy that rules our lives. And how do you do this? You eat sanitized tapeworms. <laughs> Which I'm told apparently in some Asian um, countries this is still common practice, so. The next one is blow in her face and she'll follow you anywhere. <laughs> This is one of my favorite bad ideas about <laughs> how we think smoking enhances our personal appeal. And my all-time favorite, sentenced to die with bugaboo insect spray with or without DDT. <laughs> so we know over the past 50 years we've had this amazing collection and data analysis and you know, all these really smart people working on these bad ideas, and we actually know that some of them were terrible fads, and actually some of them were things like DDT that we know have caused long-term planetary and human health, and as well as smoking. So I believe that we don't have the next 50 years to get this right, and we just need to understand what we're doing wrong to shift away from those things. But before I get into that, I want to take the penthouse view for a minute. I wish, this is one of my biggest pet peeves, please, please, please stop saying we have to save the planet, please. Because 
we know we don't. And before all of you naturalists and environmentalists and conservationists stand up, I do want to say I deeply, deeply honor you and the work that you do, and you're right. But if you have any idea about the notion of geologic time, we are just but a fraction of a blip on this 4.5 billion year long radar, and the planet is gonna be just fine once we're gone. We are actually the ones that need saving, which is why I put this help us, which actually refers back to a little the humor I was telling you about. That's all drill core. Um, so we're the, <laughs> we're the ones that need help. We are in very, um, we're in a process where we're creating uh, terrible conditions on this planet that will not be conducive to, to our long-term survival. So keeping with the penthouse bad idea view, I wanna share with you what I feel are the top bad ideas of all time. The first one, we are mining materials out of the Earth's crust faster than nature can replenish them. And how are we doing this? Well, we mine out finite resources like uranium, metals, and fossil fuels. We burn them, and we have created amazing systems and societies and built our cities all on this cheap, expendable fuel. And one of the other things that we're doing is we mine virgin materials out of the ground. We stick them in our electronics that will become obsolete or traded in within less than one year. And I think the iPad 2 and I think the iPhone 4 or 5 now, what are we at, is a perfect example. Second bad idea of all time, we are poisoning the system that we depend on, and we do this by creating tens of thousands of different types of man-made chemicals that we do not test and that bioaccumulate in us and in natural systems. We put them in our body care products and we smear them all over our body and stick them in our hair, and this is, you know, our skin is our largest absorptive organ. And they show up in places like mother's milk, so. Number three, bad all-time worst idea. We degrade, manipulate, and destroy nature. And one way we do that, some examples are, well, we've just hijacked a 2,000-year-old tradition of seed husbandry by creating genetically modified terminator seeds. We decide to pave over wetlands to put up strip malls and gated communities. We clear-cut rainforests, this is actually in South America, to create palm oil crops or fast food beef. And one of my favorites, uh, I lived in Australia for several years, we have grass as a model of beauty in arid climates, and also we cut down the rainforest to wipe our bums. And the fourth all-time bad idea is the social side of things. We create barriers in the way so that people can't meet their basic human needs. So if you can't put food on the table, shelter yourself, and feel safe, you're not gonna give two hoots about saving the environment. So this is what we call a gas pedal. It speeds up everything else. And examples of what we're doing with this is we have a lack of failure to provide a democratic process freedom of speech, and one of my all-time favorites is providing incentives to industries like the automobile industry and the tar sands industry, industries that create long-term um, challenges for us as a human society. So what do we do? I think we need to start thinking about frameworks, and George Musser put it really, really well in his article in Scientific American called The Climax of Humanity. He said, if decision makers can get the framework right, the future of humanity will be secured by thousands of mundane decisions. It's usually in mundane matters that the most profound advances are made. And I totally believe he's right. And I think we're, in a right, we're stepping in the right direction and we have this beautiful vision to pull towards. It's de it was defined by the Brundtland Commission in 1989. Some of you may be familiar with it. It says, to meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs. That is our dream. That is our vision. And we can use those four bad ideas because they have solutions lying within them. They give us contrast. They give us the ability to know what we're doing wrong. So then we can then start shifting away from those things. And what I like to say is create dreams with movement. Because human beings, we are blessed with the ability to have an imagination. We can be creative. And within those bad ideas, we find constraints. But actually, it's a good idea. They're a great thing because it helps us to be creative and innovative. So using that vision, we need to create a sustainable society, something that's back in balance with nature, where we're not taking faster and poisoning everything. 
And we can do that by starting with the beginning, with the end in mind. So what would that sustainable society look like? Well, it's, some, it's a place where we don't do any of those four bite ideas anymore. We can move backwards from there to the present, and that's a great way of creating this tension. It's called creative tension. So if you know where you need to go and you know how crappy you are being right now, well, you can start stepping in the right direction, which is all of those mundane decisions and creating dreams with these movements and being guided by those bad ideas for understanding what we need to do to move away. So when I left the mining industry and told all these people that I was leaving this amazingly well-paid job, there's tons of travel, it's really fun, you know, flexible time, everyone was like, are you crazy? That's a really bad idea. And I'm actually very thankful to them for telling me that because it gave me the contrast that I needed beyond my caribou aha moment to listen to my heart and have the courage to step away from my bad ideas. And it is my profound hope that all of you find the same courage to step forward and away from what we know we're doing bad in your own context, because we, the world, need you and your thousands of mundane decisions. Thank you.